Welcome to Crochet and Beyond, friends. My name is Angela. I do have a very beautiful stitch I like to teach you today. It's called the woven stitch. I made a very small sample of this stitch here and the reason I'm making it small is that I am making several squares of all kinds of different stitches and if you are looking into what's being posted on my channel you have seen some of those already and all of these samples I'm bringing them together in one big piece to make a blanket. So this woven stitch would go more or less here and eventually I'm gonna put them all together and yes there will be a video showing how to do that but you don't have to do this blanket you don't have to do these squares tiny like this with what I'm gonna tell you there's a little secret you can do this stitch in any size you want now the secret to accomplish that is in the foundation chain if you chain a multiple of six plus three this will always work for you there will be always the right amount of stitches at the edges here, beginning and end. It will be perfect. And just follow the multiple of six plus three and you won't go wrong. With that in mind, you have possibilities here of doing so many things, right? Um, note that this stitch particularly is very thick, super thick by the way. So I would recommend maybe try a purse, try a basket. A blanket? Wow, it would be a very, very thick blanket, that's for sure. Um, think of something that might be really cool with a, a very thick, closely knit type of stitch, and I would love to hear what you create. Note that this stitch here uses a lot of yarn. It's very thick, okay? So plan on that. Another thing that's very unique about this stitch is that you will use front post double crochets and back post double crochets quite a bit. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, no worries, because I'm gonna show you exactly how they are done. It's just a little different than where you insert your hook to make that double crochet happen. So it's, it's all good, you're gonna be fine. As for materials, what I'm gonna use is Red Heart Super Saver. This is worsted weight, yarn size four, acrylic. And I will use a 5.25 millimeter hook for the foundation chain. That's only for the foundation chain and for the work itself, I go a five millimeter, all right? And finally, we need a needle with a dual point, big eye to weave in the ends and yes, scissors as always. Once your work is built up, I'm going to show you how to do a very simple edging around the square. And I'm very particular here with how many single crochets I want on the sides because after all, I'm joining this with other squares. So all the squares need to have 25 single crochets on the edge. If you're doing something else, you don't worry about it. You, you might not even need an edge, okay? So I hope this is helpful. Try this, do some ideas with it. If you want to build this blanket, it's going to take time. So it, yeah, plan for weeks and weeks and weeks of work. Um, it's fun, but uh, it will take time. But each one of these squares is an individual project that can branch out to so many other options. And if you come up with something really creative, I would like to see that. So please um, look in the descriptions below. I have a, a group on Facebook that you can join and you're invited there if, and post your pictures. And if you don't do Facebook, you can tell me here on YouTube, on the comments below what you're working on and I would love to know. Already, subscribe, please like the video, and if you're ready for some work, let's do it. Let's get your yarn, let's get your hook, and come on, let's go. Let's get started with the foundation chain. You will need 27 chains. This is how I get started. I make a loop, pull through once, hold tight, two, and three, then hold up here, let go, pull the string, and now there you have a knot and your very first uh, foundation chain uh, formed, okay? So that's one, we want 27. Two, three, four, five, 26, and 27, okay? So let go of the hook and then take a look at the chain. See how it becomes quite stretchy? Yeah, so you want the chains to look even and quite flexible. A bigger hook will definitely help for that to happen. 
All right, so let's work into row one. Row one is very simple. You have to do double crochets all throughout the chain, okay? So you will do your very first double crochet on the fourth chain from the hook. So that looks like this. That's the first, second, third, fourth. That's where your very first double crochet goes, right there. Okay, and then move on working a double crochet on every single chain till the end of the row. So once I get to the end of the row, I will see you again and move on from there. And there is one here and one more right here. Now I have 25 double crochets. Note that the very first one here, these three chains that came along once you inserted your first um, double crochet here, well, those chains here form your first double crochet, okay? So you need to count that as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now, if you're doing a longer piece of work here with more chains, yeah, make sure you follow the rule of multiple of six plus three, already. Then the stitch will always even itself out on the edges, okay? Make sure that you follow that rule. Now let's work into row two and row three. These two rows are gonna alternate back and forth to form this woven stitch. But it's a bit tricky because you have to use the front post double crochet and the back post double crochet alternating. Okay, so watch out here. I'm gonna do row one, uh, forgive me, row two and row three with you. And then I'm just gonna leave it written on the screen and assuming that you will understand that you continue then repeating row two and row three over and over again to form the woven pattern. All right, row two, before we turn, chain one and then turn. Okay, now you have to work a front post double crochet around the first six stitches. What are your first six stitches? Those are the double crochets right here. This one included. One, two, three, four, five, six. So those are your first stitches. You could also just call them your very first six double crochets. A front post double crochet works like this. Yarn over, keep looking at it straight from here. So don't look from the back, that will make you confused. Keep looking at it from the front, bring the hook behind that double crochet, insert right there. Yarn over, pull through, and now finish your double crochet right there. Now do a front post double crochet on the next one. Yarn over, come in and out behind it. Make sure it's fairly loose and finish your double crochet right there. That was already two. Do the same thing on the next one. From the front to the back, through it and pull through. There we go, and that's three. Now let's go four. Make sure it stays fairly loose, otherwise it will be a bit difficult to work with. That is a four. Five, and then one more. That is six, okay? So that is the front post double crochet. Now you need to do one back post double crochet. By back, it means you have to start from behind, like that. 
First, yarn over and keep that yarn over nice and secure here. Now, turn towards the back of the work and find that double crochet you want to work with. Okay, so get into the side here, under and through. Pull the string up, right in the back there, and finish the double crochet. Okay, so you see, it starts becoming um, kind of like three-dimensional. So these ones here, they pop out to the front, and the back post will pop out to the back. Now you're going to work the front post double crochet around the next five stitches, not six. The six were to get started here. Now in the middle of the work, you need to do always five. So let's go front double crochet. So this one was taken already by the back post double crochet. Now let's go to the next one. And pull through. That was one. Two, three. The front post double crochets are usually easier, that's for sure. Four, and there is five. There we go. Now, one back post double crochet. Okay, yarn over first, look behind here, and it usually helps if you kind of like bring your thumb right into that post, see? And pop it up a bit, and it's more visible. And then pull through, make it loose. Don't be tight on this stitch, otherwise it's not gonna be fun. Alrighty, now again, we go another five on the front post, double crochet. Very good. And one more. Okay, now a back post double crochet. Always yarn over first. Watch the back. In and through. Pull the yarn through. Okay, and then finish the double crochet. Very good, so that's the end of my row. Now I'm going to finish up with six front post double crochet, including the very last one. Okay. So crocheting with front post double crochet and back post double crochet is quite interesting. It can create quite some interesting designs. It makes your look um, literally look um, three-dimensional. So it's very neat. And then there is the last one here. And go in and through. And that's row two completed for you. Okay? Let's move on to row three. So row three is slightly different. You will be doing more back post double crochets than the front post double crochets. Before we turn, we chain one and you turn. Now the back post double crochet, to do that one on the very first double crochet here is a bit tricky. So just be patient here. If it doesn't work right away, just um, pause the video and repeat this section here until you get it right. It can be a bit fussy. Okay, so first of all, yarn over. Then look towards the back. Make your yarn over here and then under and then find your post. And go slowly and very loosely pull through. See, it's, it, it can escape quite easily. There it is and then finish your single crochet. That one is always gonna be a fussy one, so you might have to just go with a little bit more caution. And then go a back post double crochet on the next one. And sometimes it escapes, yeah. Okay, that's two. And then that is the third one. So there's a lot of back post 
double crochets on row three. Okay, there we go. Now you need a front post double crochet on the next one, right there. And then you will do five back post double crochets on the next one. So you are reversing pretty much what you're doing from row, um, row two, right? And then go from back. Okay, because you are now working on um, upon the previous row, these ones here, they, they are sometimes popping up at you quite easily, except if you have one that's popping up this way, then you have to push it a little bit that way so you can see it well. There is three. There is four and five. Okay, now time for one front post double crochet. There was one. And again, we go for five back post double crochets. So there is one. Two. three, four, and five. Now one on the front and five on the back and then we're almost done with my row. So I'm doing the whole thing on this one with you because the front double, uh, front post double crochets and back post double crochets can be a bit unfamiliar for many people, All right? So it's it's a bit different. Okay, that was five. Now one to the front. Okay, and again I'm at the end. And remember, up here at the front, I had three of them three that were done on the back, so I need to finish with three on the back as well. So here we go. There's one and two. Just know that the very last one, it's a very chubby one, so you have to kind of do the whole thing. It's very thick a post, so grab the whole thing right there. Pull through. Oh, see, it escapes. Go again. Pull through. And done. Already. There we go. So that makes the woven stitch. It looks very nice. I like this stitch. I'm one day going to make a basket with that because I think it looks so cool. I see the side, it won't give it a thing, right? Now, this side, it looks very neat. Now, um, yeah, a basket or maybe a purse, yeah, a bag, that would look really nice because it, it becomes a very thick, dense um, stitch here. And yes, you end up using more yarn as well. That's for sure. Now, this was row two and this is, was row three. And keep repeating now between row two and three, two and three until your desired length. If you're working with a longer piece, then, hey, make sure that you follow the rule of six chains plus three so that you always end up a correct number here at the edges. See the edges don't exactly reflect what is happening in the middle but as long as you have an even amount here, not even necessarily because there's three stitches here so it's not not, not talking about an even number, um, just talking about it being the same on both sides. When I'm done with my desired length, I'm gonna meet with you again. I'm gonna show you how to do a very simple single crochet edging. All right, so here's that woven stitch. Looks really nice once it builds up, doesn't it? I kinda like the look of it, yeah. Now, if you turn it around, it's totally different, right? It really has a right and wrong side. Now, you might have noticed here that something went wrong 
I don't know what I did in that row. I must have switched around the double, um, the front post with back post. I don't know what I did. I only noticed that three or four rows after, but then I caught up and it all looks okay again. So, and on this side, you can barely see it. So I'm all right. So I decided not to fix it. So it's, it's forgivable. <laughs> Very well. So let's do a simple single crochet edging. Now, one thing, make sure that if you are doing an edging, that your work ends with the ending here to your left with the right side facing you. So you don't want to do, to start your edging here and the other side. Okay. Um, simply if you follow the rule of, okay, your last row should be the one that starts with that starts with three back posts and ends with three back posts. If you end like that, you should be okay. Because we are going to continue here the edges, but we're not gonna turn again. We are just gonna move on this way, all right? Now, you will have three single crochets in each corner and 25 single crochets in between. Because I'm joining this square to several other squares to make a blanket. I need to be very particular about having exactly 25 single crochets on each border because when I'm joining them, they need to be uh, the same. So if that's not your, your situation, if you're not joining squares, then you don't need to be so fussy over exactly 25. You can give and take. Um, so you have to somehow estimate how many you will need. Carefully, you don't do too many nor too little. All right. So before we move on with how, where we are going to insert the hook and how many in each space, let's do the corner first. Chain one and do not turn. Continue working right here. So right in that big opening right there, give me three single crochets in the same spot. Very good. Now this particular stitch leaves a very thick twirled type of edge. Alrighty, so we'll have to work around it. Um, the ones that look very um, bulky, they actually are, have big holes in them. So that is definitely one place to put a single crochet inside. Now here is a big opening. You can likely put two, right? So that's your spots. You, you might have noticed if you tried my other uh, stitch samples that the um, edge doesn't look so bumpy, so so thick, right? This one particularly does. Okay. Now, um, decide first here where is your corner going to be. I see that opening right there. That's where my corner will be. So let's estimate twenty-five somewhere here. So let's go by doing one here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. 24, 25. So yeah, kind of if I do two stitches in the ones that lo don't look so bumpy, two here and one here, kind of open up the stitch to see the hole, that should even itself out into my 25 single crochets. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Okay. All right, my first one is going to go, I think this is a big gap from here to here. So I am going to go one right there. So that's one. That here is two. Now here I do three and four. Then five. Six and seven. And there we 
you go. And here is, where is it? Eight, somewhere in there. <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Twenty one, twenty two, <clears throat> twenty. Ah, oh, come on, twenty three, and then two here, twenty four and twenty five. All right, we go. Okay, now here's my corner. I need three, one, three single crochets in the same spot, two and three again let's go and see how many we got make sure that you know where your your corner will go right there and let's see if all across will make more or less 25. okay let's start right okay so this was your foundation chain so these look like these loops right here each one of them is a spot to put a stitch okay to put a single crochet so let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So I need three more. So every time when I get here, see, these are my landmarks, these posts right there. I will double up right there. And then I will get the 25 I want. Okay, let's go. One. These ones are always a bit tricky. Two, because they seem stretchy, but it will even itself out just fine, okay? And then, right, careful that you don't do this. You end up having two at the same time. Okay, see? Three, that was three or was that four? Oh, I already forgot. That was three. Okay. Four. Five. Right here, I'm going to double up. Six and seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, I'm going to double up here, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, <clears throat> Come on, 19, 20, and I'm gonna do 21 in the same spot. 22, 23, 24, and 25. Very good. Okay, now here goes three for my next corner. And from here, I'm going to let you work on this one here on your own. Again, same thing. This is a bumpy, thick edge. And make sure that you even out your 25 and find your corner first. When we are here, I'm going to get back to you and then I'm going to finish up the last edge together. Alrighty, now there is that corner again. Two and three already so your last edge has very obvious stitches that was your last row so they are very much present right there can't miss them right so let's just double check if um we need to double up some to have the 25 i want 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I need to double up one. I'm going to do that in the middle here somewhere. And then they're good. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Hi, Mocha. <laughs> Hello, cat. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, let's double up. Thirteen, fourteen, there we go. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And somebody's here. There's a cat tail. <laughs> there we go. And 19. <laughs> She's playing with my screen. <laughs> 20. 21. Mocha now. 22. 23. <laughs> More. Take the cat away. 24. And 25. There's a screen right in front of me for me to see the video. And she is watching my hands moving. And she's playing with the screen. Come on, Mocha. Hey, say hi to my friends. Yeah, silly girl. Come on. Get out of the way. <laughs> okay, so here we go. 25. And there here is a place to... Join and slip stitch and ta-da, we are done. Alrighty, so cut the edge, pull through, weave in the other side. You have to weave in as well. Okay. And there we go. So weave in from the back side if possible. I usually just sneak it in right there where the single crochet is just formed. Ah, just go for it. It doesn't have to be all nice and perfect. And I usually go until I got no more yarn left. So you don't need to cut your string too long. Okay. One more here, and here, and there, and ta-da, that's enough. Okay. Then do the same thing with this side, okay? And you are done. All right. Now, here it is. It looks a little funny on the edges. So this is not the best stitch for anything that you want laying flat, because it kind of acts a little funny because I'm joining this with other squares it will be fine I can imagine this stitch being great for baskets and purses I haven't tried one ever but maybe one day I will all right so if you come up with a very good idea do it and then once you start doing it take pictures of of the process of building it and keep posting in our Facebook group um, the link for that is on the descriptions below would love to see your pictures okay Alrighty, good job. Take care. Until soon.